switch. Give me four now. Four. Mine. There you go. Good. Buddy. Keep that core engaged. Athletes are going to get bigger and stronger and faster. Now you have men, women competing. Everybody's working out. From the hottest workouts. That means that you work so hard in this workout that for the next 24 to 36 hours, you're going to be burning an excess amount of calories. Give me a yes if you're ready to build some mountains. To the hardest bodies. Do you feel your abs firing a little bit? I do. The butt setting social media on fire. From the photos that I were posting, it was those yoga pants, and people were always like, that butt, <laughs> my booty. And the future of fitness. This isn't your grandmother's treadmill, right? <laughs> Tonight, a look into the fitness evolution. I'm Jennifer Lammers. Fitness, we've depended on it since the beginning of time. Over the next 30 minutes, we'll explore its evolution from prehistoric ages to modern man and woman. But first, we'll begin with survival of the fittest. Let's rock. Long before gyms, CrossFit, at-home workouts, and bodybuilders flexing their muscles on stage, Fitness had a much different face. It's difficult to trace back the exact origins of the concept of fitness, but as far as we can tell, probably the ancient Greeks from about 2000 BC were the first to really embrace this concept of a sound body, a sound mind. Some of the earliest depictions of fitness are found in sculptures and drawings, chiseled bodies wrestling and grappling to the ground, using each other as resistance instead of barbells or weights. A workout routine based on one thing, survival. There were the Athenians and the Spartans, the Spartans in particular, trained to be prepared for war. Elsewhere in the world, it was just the opposite. While they trained for battle in Greece, 3,000 miles away came a practice rooted in peace. Yoga had a very spiritual origin. Um, it came from India. The Eastern religions and Eastern cultures embrace spirituality. They embrace the importance of breathing, of being in touch with oneself. Fitness hadn't yet become a part of mainstream culture. It was more about function than how you looked in the mirror. But that all changed at the turn of the 20th century with one man. Probably the first guy to lift weights, to exercise for the sake of physical beauty, was a guy named Eugen Sandow. He was a Prussian. His real name was Frederick Mueller. And people began to marvel at his physique. And the great promoter, uh, Flo Ziegfeld, actually saw Sandow and was amazed by him, and amazed by the reaction, not that he got from lifting weights and feats of strength, but from his physique. And he said, I want to promote you. I want to take you around the world, show off your muscles. Sandow became an instant celebrity. In the early 1990s, he was one of the most famous men in the world. And it wasn't long before others took up the gauntlet. There was Charles Atlas. He started out training with weights, and then the story has it that one day he was at the zoo, and he was watching either a lion or a tiger stretching. And as it stretched, he saw its muscles contracting and flexing. And he got this idea in his head. He said, that's really interesting. They're not lifting anything, and yet their muscles are really, really contracting forcefully. So he labeled it dynamic tension, and he began to sell it as a course. A 10-point self-improvement plan. Self-improvement plan right over here. From Charles Atlas came Jack LaLanne, the first man to bring fitness to television. Before Jane Fonda, Jillian Michaels, or Billy Blanks, Jack LaLanne hosted the nation's first ever fitness TV show, The Jack LaLanne Show, from 1953 to 1985, inspiring millions of workout enthusiasts all around the country, including celebrity trainer Don Saladino. I still recognize that if it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now. Saladino, who trains stars like Ryan Reynolds, Scarlett Johansson, and Lee Schreiber, says the power of celebrity is what sent fitness exploding into pop culture. You watch a superhero, you watch a character in a movie look a certain way, and they look phenomenal. Might be the same way I look at a physique competitor get on stage and be like, oh my god, they look incredible. In 1977, an independent docudrama came out featuring a group of amateur and professional bodybuilders as they prepared for the Mr. Olympia and Mr. Universe contest. It was called Pumping Iron. Well, Pumping Iron, before it came out, bodybuilding was like a shadow sport. And most people didn't realize the value of that weight training of fitness. And its star was a then unknown Austrian named Arnold Schwarzenegger. This is what you have to do, like this. He was this massive, massive bodybuilder. No one had ever seen anything like him before. He really set a new standard in terms of muscularity. Now alternate. 
Between pumping iron and TV stars like Jack LaLanne, women watching at home thought to themselves, hey, we can do this too. We love Jane Fonda. She definitely got women up off the couch and doing high impact aerobics and she had us doing leg raises and grape binding and she really introduced the home workout component to women. She's an actress working out, looking fit, that women felt like it was okay, I could be part of it too. It doesn't matter because it's any age, any body, any type and that's why it's, it, it's taken up, kicked up tremendously. With stars like Lou Ferrigno, Jane Fonda, and Arnold Schwarzenegger lifting the torch, the at-home fitness industry ignited, turning what was once a niche activity into an everyday lifestyle for millions of Americans. Richard Simmons, Suzanne Somers, Billy Blanks, Jillian Michaels, inspiring people to get in shape whether it was at the gym or their living rooms. That's how it was for the next two decades until a gymnast named Greg Glassman came up with a program that approached fitness like no one had seen before. CrossFit opened people's eyes to all the different variations of what fitness means. It was everything rolled into one. Gymnastics, weightlifting, sprinting, all based on competition. It set a new template for fitness, the idea that anyone could become an athlete. And this is where things have really evolved, and this is why I know Athletes are going to get bigger and stronger and faster because we're going to be able to come in day in and day out now or we're going to be able to manipulate our training intensities and their bodies are going to recover and they're going to be peaking exactly when we need them to peak and that has been the guesswork in the past. It's, it's a remarkable. Coming up. One minute base. Three, two. They're the hottest workouts around the world and from fat to that. I would lose one, I would gain 20. If I didn't see the progress fast enough, I would eat a ton. A trainer's life-saving decision. It's Keone's story.